Hello, YouTube world. This is Johnny Mo coming to you today. Some little bit of office talk. I'm asking you the question: What are you doing? Stay tuned. What are you doing right now? What are you doing? What are you doing? It's February second. What in the world are you doing? I I I it's been a bad month. It's been no snow, and I bought a plow, and I haven't used it. You said buy a plow, and and I don't got no money, and I don't know what to do. I'm just not gonna make it. Shut up! What's wrong with you? Go get a job. Your dream's not over. It's just postponed. Go get a job. Go to work. Get some money in the bank. Have you even sat down? Well, John, we haven't had any snow. Well, that means you had a lot of time to get your life in order, to sit in your office, to get your budget going, to find out how much it costs to run you, Inc. The problem is we don't want to sit down and we don't want to really delve into the numbers. We don't want to, we don't want to look into our life. Instead, we just want to run around with a chicken with our head cut off and try to outwork our problems. But you don't know how big your problem is and what the right answer for your problem is. How do you how do you solve a problem? You look at the problem, you analyze the problem, you come up with a plan to solve the problem. The problem is you don't know how much it costs to run you. So you run around year after year after year, and yeah, it's not working, I can't put money away. Because you're lazy, you don't want to go to work. You don't want to go to work. You don't want to do a part-time job. For seven years, for seven years, I worked a part-time job to get that off the ground. Seven years, seven years, worked in the daylight, worked that afternoon, worked all winter long until I could get the business to the point where it, for seven years I could have gave up. Now it's been 24 years, 24 years, seven of those years I had to work a part-time job. It's the stuff that no one wants to talk to you about. They want to make you think like, oh, I've always had a winter fund. I've always had a winter fund. Your first five years, you're struggling to make a fund. You're struggling to make a profit. Yeah, I, I bought a plow and it just has it snowed. What are you doing to get more business right now? What are you doing? My dream is over. I didn't make enough money on my first year, my second year, my third year. I haven't made any money. What are you doing to help yourself out? What are you doing right now? What are you doing? Keep asking yourself. I hope you wake up in the middle of your side, middle of the night and say, what am I doing? If you're not doing nothing right now and you don't have enough money in the bank to make your next month's pay your bills, then I want you to do me a favor. I want you to go upstairs and I want you to pack a lunch. I want you to pack a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. I want you to get a bottle of water. And I want you to go out and get in that truck. And I want you to go out and I want you to find a job and work 20 hours a week so that you can get what you need to make to survive. Don't let your dream die because it ain't working. It's time to, to dig in even tighter. I'm going to work a second job. I'm going to do it. You're running around like a chick with your head cut off doing nothing. When you really need to be doing is making ends meet in your household so your dream doesn't die. Because the longer you wait, the longer you wait, years go by. And you're 35, and you're 40, and you're 45. You're running out of time. What are you doing? Maybe you have a winter fund. Maybe you have a winter fund right now. Maybe you're doing pretty good. But you're sitting around watching Netflix and chilling. Binge watching Netflix. What are you doing? What, the, what are you doing? This is what you should be doing. Let me read you a letter. This is my last year customer letter. You should be reaching out to your customers. You should be thinking about it. It's February. Next month, you can start doing some spring cleanup. But you need to reach out to your customers. There's extra money in our pockets right now. The economy's doing pretty well. And they want to they fix up their house. They're talking about it. And then all of a sudden, your letter shows up in the mail. Hey, we were just talking about that, Johnny. Could you come and give us a bid? But no, you want to be late. You want to wait to the last minute. You want to contact them in March, late March, and then you want to come the next week. And and they're they're thinking about it right now. It's it's great day today. It's fifty one degrees. The sun is blaring. They're outside. They're breathing the fresh air, and they're looking at like, wow, look at my 
Look at my landscape. It needs some attention. They're thinking about it. Hit them hard. Hit them hard right now. Hit them with a letter. Here's an example letter that I wrote last year. Dear valued customer, high school basketball is ending. Soon you will hear the sound of mowers throughout the neighborhood. And so I thought I would touch base with you on the this 29 upcoming season. Boy, I write it like I read it. I believe when they read this letter, they're reading it just like I'm reading it. They're excited to get this letter. Please take time to look at our services. We have you signed up below. Looking forward to seeing you in the next few weeks. We are offering 12 months of billing. This breaks the cost up of our service to make them as affordable as possible. If you are interested, please contact our office and we will work up a quote that works for you. We're working for you, baby. Below are a list of the services we pro provide. The ones marked are the services we have you scheduled for. If it is not marked and you would like to be included, please call and schedule. We look forward to hearing from you. We look forward. We're waiting for you. I'm waiting. I'm expecting. I sent a letter out. So I'm expecting that phone to ring to add on to extra services. We would like to inform you on any changes that have occurred in the pricing of your mowing service. In pricing, we try to be fair and competitive for what we provide. The price for your mowing service is blank. This is a great time to hit them with a little bit of a, ah, give them a little $2, bah, maybe a $3, ah, they can take it. You inform them. Don't wait a week before. Let them, let them, let them, ah, let them get it now. As spring draws close, maybe you've changed your mind about our services we provide. Please contact us by 32419. Otherwise, you will see us as usual in the spring. Give them a cutoff date. Maybe they're thinking about moving. Maybe they're thinking about changing companies. Why is that important? Because if you've got a stacked list, you give them a cutoff date, you can replace them. Guys, you got to think of everything. you got to get in there. You might Someone might not be that happy with the service. Maybe they moved. Maybe something's happened. And, and boom, hey, listen, we're going to change services this year. And, and you know what? And that's fine. That way you can answer the phone. Listen, I got a spot open and you can aggressively go market for it. Woo! In closing, we'd like to thank you for your business. If there's any questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to call us. You can reach us at our office and you hit them with the number. And then down here is a list of the services that we provide. And each customer, based on last year's checklist, we check it off. We check it off and we keep, we keep going. We hit them, baby. Letters are going out. Maybe you have employees. Maybe you have employees. Do you have an employee handbook? Do you have an employee handbook? Do you have expectations of what you want to see from your employee? Do you have an employee? Here's an example of mine that I had a few years ago. This is a time to work on it. This isn't a time to sit on a couch, watch Netflix, get caught up on you, you binge watch this show. It ain't time. It's time to get ready for the season, baby. It's go time. It's time to get in the garage and start changing oil. It's time to get those motors. Rum, rum, rum. Yeah, baby. Yeah. So employee handbook, employee name, date, effective too. So right off the bat, when we meet with an employee, we put the employee name down. And we'd say that this contract, this employee handbook, because we go over it. We would go out to dinner. I'd take them out to breakfast, and we'd go over it. And it would be effective date from blank to blank, usually from like uh, March 15th all the way to, say, December 15th. And then we would sign a new contract the following year. So we go right into the benefits. What's the benefit working? Back then, it looks like my benefits were one paid holiday per year after completion of the two after your second year. Your holiday three maximum is benefit four. All holidays must be paid out that year. So I would, at the time, after two years and every additional year, you got a maximum of four days. You got holidays. So you got four holidays where you could, hey, it was paid. You could call off, take a holiday pay. Benefit two, every day that employee comes on time, there will be a $2 bonus that is paid out in December. Max bonus is $400. So every day that you come to work on time, I put $2 into a jar. And if you, if you completed it the whole year, you got $400 bonus. Now... Rules and definition to this rule. Listen, I, I didn't have to pay this out because this generation doesn't know what it means to actually be on time. So, first time late, employee loses one $2 day. 
The second time late, the employee loses two two dollars days. The third is the third is two weeks. So you list for every day that you come to work, you miss two weeks of it. So if you were late three times, you miss two straight weeks of the bonus. Number four is a month. If you're late four times coming to work, you lose a whole month's worth of bonus. If you're late again, you lose another month until there's nothing left of the bonus. So every so if you're late five times, every time after one time, you keep losing a month until there's nothing left of the bonus. All right, another benefit. You get a $1 raise. Half to be paid out June 1st, the other half August 1st. So you get 50 cents in June. And, and see, I don't believe in giving a raise right off the rip. I don't believe in giving them a raise right off the rip because they come, they work, they get their raise, and then they don't work out. So here's how I did it. I gave them a raise, 50 cents to be paid out in June, and 50 cents to pay it out August 1st. So that way you had to earn it. Now look, look at this rules and definition. Any written violation from April 1st to week of raise given constitutes as a 15 cent dock and raise. So if you're late, if you're late, that is a written document. That's a that's a written problem. So you, you lose 15 cents. So not only are you losing bonus, but you're losing your rate. See, you gotta have an expectation. You gotta have something that people can can work towards. Instead, re-lower the bar so far. Eh, they're late every day. Who cares? Eh, who cares? Repay them. Nah, no big deal. Ba, ba, ba. Okay. What is expected of you if you're working for Johnny's Mowing back when I had employees? This is what I expected. Let me know if I've been fair. Let me know in the content. Because I've been fair. Be on time. Neat in appearance. Clean shave. Come prepared to work. This includes having a lunch, work boots, uniforms, resupply, and a good attitude. Be conscious of property damage. Any damage will be assessed to paychecks or immediate dismissal. Adhere to a drug test. Smoking is prohibited around, in, or on trucks, mowers, gas cans, and any fire hazard. Owner has the right to change, add, or subtract from this list. Breaks. 10, 12, 2, 4. 10 minutes, lunch, half hour. So you could take a break at 10, lunch is at 12, 2, and 4. Meaning you have an opportunity to smoke at those breaks. Calling off is prohibited unless due to emergency, sickness, death, and other documented emergencies. Not showing up to work and not calling is automatic dismissal. Be professional and polite to all customers. Cell phone use is no longer to be used in the hours of operation. Emergencies only or used in when communication is necessary between employee and foreman. This includes texting. Cell phones can be used in smoking breaks and lunch breaks. All personal business will be handled unless given permission on personal time, not on company time. Work work to be done with excellence. Work is to be done with excellence. Sample example, uh, sidewalk. Uh, what that means is uh, doing things in excellence, like you know, so shoveling a sidewalk. Where if you have an eighteen, you have a twenty-four inch sidewalk, you have an eighteen inch blade, and you shovel an eighteen inch uh, path instead of shoveling the whole twenty-four. Go the extra mile shovel the 24. Every infraction comes with a written point value. Once you reach 12 points, you're automatically dismissed. Being late is one point. Bad attitude, one point. Smoking on equipment, three points. Not coming to work without informing, 12 points. So cell phone violation, one point. That's, that's what you should be working on. Have a company standard. Have some benefits. It's a give and take. What, what, what do you want and understand that they need something. I had four days paid vacation every single year. You only worked from April to November. So even if, I don't even know if they worked in November, babe, but October. So even if you work from, coming on time is not a lot to ask. You're getting a dollar a raise a year. 50 cent and 50 cent. But you earn it. Guys, this is what I'm talking about right here. This is your time. Shut the Netflix off. Go get a part-time job if you need it. Get your letters ready. Let's go. It's go time, baby. The season is starting. My first quarter's coming up. Guys, that's my time. You have a great day.